loma que alcanza a saber por dónde va la nube, allá es la finca. Y pues como tú la puedes ver, ya está toda en el monte porque no se ha podido cultivar. Por lo del, pues los de los posibles enfrentamientos y los, las minas, los artefactos. Long after the last shot in a conflict is fired, unexploded and abandoned weapons continue to kill and maim. People can't work their land when explosive remnants of war threaten life and limb. Getting back to normal life is impossible when access to firewood, water and other basic essentials is blocked. La gente pasa únicamente por el camino porque no se puede meter a los, al campo, a los alrededores, porque da miedo de que estén las minas. Uno se siente como, como le digo, como apartado, como desplazado, por decirlo así, porque ya, ya no puede seguir utilizando lo que uno creía que era de uno. Pues. Weapon contamination makes people's lives difficult in many ways. Whole communities can become paralyzed by fear. Weapon contamination is a term that we use in the ICRC to describe the pollution, the contamination that results from conflict. This is quite complex and quite broad. It includes, for instance, unexploded ammunition or ordnance, stuff that's been fired, that's failed to detonate and is left in a very sensitive, dangerous uh, state. Abandoned ordnance or ammunition that's just been left behind on the battlefield. We have developed within the organization an approach that draws on the broad range of capacities that, that we have, which are really quite strong. Uh, these include water, food, shelter, and also a whole range of health capacities. In Iraq, in the 1991 and 2003 wars, 17 million cluster submunitions were fired or dropped. With an estimated 25% failing to detonate, Iraqi people are at serious risk decades later. And this is only one aspect of Iraq's total explosive remnants of war problem. The first step to clearing an area is to find out the location and type of weapon contamination. Talking to local people is key to identifying dangerous areas. Working with local authorities and the army is essential to ensure clearance is properly coordinated. Communicating with other demining organizations avoids clearance being duplicated. The ICRC can then target where to demine to make the biggest difference to people's lives. The ultimate responsibility for dealing with contamination in a territory rests with the national authorities. And we will, where required, offer capacity building support to national authorities for instance, in the area of uh, technical clearance, information management, or the development of national standards. Weapon contamination is a complex issue. Since the industrialization of warfare and the invention of high explosives, each new conflict adds to the deadly legacy. Hundreds of thousands of square kilometers in 119 countries are polluted by unexploded and abandoned weapons. In the last decade alone, they killed more than 17,000 people, 
and injured over 70,000. Beyond this, surplus munition stockpiles are often left rotting and unstable. When these explode, they cause massive damage. Clearing contamination is one more instrument in the ICRC's toolkit to protect civilians. When clearance isn't possible, simple steps can reduce the risk of accident. In this small town in southern Colombia, it's a long way to the nearest hospital. Learning basic first aid can save lives. Here, the community gathers to learn some important survival skills. It's a moment to relax as well as learn. Nelsie is worried about the effect of living in a conflict zone on her children. As part of its risk reduction approach, the ICRC works with children and adults on safe behaviour, such as keeping guns safely locked away from children and reminding people to stay away from known contaminated areas. Between 1990 and 2010, the Colombian government estimates over 8,300 people were injured or died because of abandoned weapons of war. To reduce future weapon contamination, it's important warring groups take responsibility for their actions. Wherever possible, we seek to engage with armed groups to remind them of their responsibilities in terms of weapons use and also of the humanitarian consequences of certain weapons. A recent example, a successful example, where we negotiated with an armed group who then cleared contamination, in this case mines, from the approach to a village and that enabled us to go in and to complete a vaccination program. This woman is the only health worker in Nelsie's remote village. Doing her job in a town littered with unexploded landmines and remnants of war isn't easy. The weapon contamination expert has set up a simulation so health workers can learn what to do if their ambulance is hit by an improvised explosive device. Pues aprendimos muchas cosas. Si hay algún artefacto 
en, en la vía, pedir auxilio eh, o retirarse por las mismas huellas que uno ha caminado. Listo. Bueno, primero que todo, felicitarlos porque veo que hicieron el ejercicio muy juiciosos. Con este ejercicio lo que queremos es sensibilizarlos a ustedes. Imagínense si ustedes hubiesen pasado por ahí, en una situación real. ¿Qué hubiese ocurrido? Explotado el artefacto explosivo y... Exactamente. Livelihoods can be devastated when vital agricultural land is strewn with deadly weaponry. Finding solutions to this problem is part of the ICRC's cross-cutting approach. For example, in Nelsie and Murta's village, helping farmers work close to home instead of venturing onto weapon-contaminated land. Pues como a todos nos daban algo, o sea, entre se hicieron cuatro grupos, cuyes cerdos, peces, gallinas. Entonces de esos había que escoger uno, una prioridad. Entonces yo escogí cerdos. Me la hace un bulto, ahí está. Teja de zinc, cuatro unidades. Cemento gris. Dos bultos cemento gris. Ese no es, ¿no? Esta es una gran ayuda, todos estamos muy contentos porque de ahí vamos a solventar algunas de nuestras necesidades. Pues igual no serán todas, pero sí algunas, las más urgentes al menos. Living in areas polluted by weapons of war pushes people to take risks to survive. Nubia lives next to a military base. To eke out a living, she, like many people across the world, go looking for unexploded and abandoned ordnance as scrap metal to sell. Estoy recogiendo de esas unas bolitas y por ahí un minuto yo estoy mis manos estoy mirando y después se lo se lo flotó y de una vez que está bien en el ejército y lleven hasta el carro hasta el mismo hasta el hospital. Ahora estoy muy mal, estoy enfermo. Nubia's injuries have affected her not just physically, but financially too. To help Nubia and her community, the ICRC gave them simple tools so they can cut down leaves they need for their craft work without damaging the entire tree. The aim is to give the group the skills to work close to home without going into dangerous areas and in a sustainable way. One of the lessons that we've learned from the microeconomic initiative projects, it is a comprehensive project that involves different aspects such as psychological support, individual uh, counseling, financial support, emotional support, and also a very long-term commitment. Where lots of accidents happen in remote areas where communities don't know about their rights. So ICRC, through its 
access in those areas makes those communities aware of their rights. And we also work together with national authorities to explain what their obligations are in terms of attending those victims. Many victims are unaware that they may be able to apply to the authorities for compensation and help with medical costs. It's vital to know all the rights that we have and to know that we are not alone. There are someone who can listen to us and someone who can help us, especially the armed conflict, that we have to deal with us. We think that as we have to deal with us, we have to deal with us, we have to deal with us, and we have to go. Sometimes we have to go. For people to move forward in life, the ultimate solution is removing and destroying mines and explosive remnants of war once and for all. In the Iraqi village of Al-Abath, just to get water, people have to travel long distances through dangerous weapon-contaminated areas. When you have a water source, but the pumping station or the water station cannot be rehabilitated because it's completely surrounded by explosive remnants of war. So in such case, the ICRC Explosive Ordnance Disposal Team can come, clear the area, and then the ICRC water engineer arrives and make the proper assessment for the rehabilitation of this unit. Which is exactly what's happening in Leila's village and elsewhere. Clearing areas of unexploded weapons of war enables essential humanitarian work to be done as quickly and effectively as possible, as well as allowing local people to lead normal lives again. In uh, 24 communities, uh, uh, covered so far, we were able to remove more than 1,500 explosive remnants of war. By doing this, we saved some lives. ICRC weapons experts collected one third of this ammunition stockpile to be destroyed. Known to be neutral and independent, ICRC can access areas out of reach to other organizations and can demine in a fast, flexible way, adapting to the situation on the ground. The organization has the capacity to demine and to conduct explosive ordnance disposal, both of these through the Weapon Contamination Unit. We can deploy teams within 72 hours. We can develop longer-term clearance programs and we can also conduct training for national authorities and for others. In the end, it's clear there is only one solution if we want to reduce the impact of contamination on people, and that is to clear it once and for all. <laughs>